will come. my weird stomach sounds. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And my website, which in my last recording I told you that was gone, is now back. Because... I just can't make my mind up about anything. So there you go. The let me bore you to sleep dot com is up and running again. I've rebuilt it. It's pretty much identical to what it was before I deleted it. I'm becoming a whiz kid on the WordPress. It's uh, WordPress is a, if you don't know, is a website building, open source thing. Mind you, if it's open source, why am I paying? Yeah, so it's not, you know, it's kind of, it's costing me twenty one pounds a month. And I can host, I can have five websites on there. So I've got the let me bore you to sleep.com, I've got the deep sleep whisper.com. So both of those websites are now up and running again. Um, this evening I built jasonnewland.com the website but I've, I've had problems linking it to my domain name for some reason so when I said I built the website I've kind of got a very basic page at the moment because what I'm gonna have on my main Jason Newland website is categories so have it all organized by categories so all the relaxation recordings chronic pain recordings uh, s- sleep recordings uh, will all be separated and then the courses like let me bore you to sleep deep sleep whisper oh wow 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 so yes considering there's about a thousand recordings it's it's going to be a little bit of a uh, job. I don't want to devote too much of my time to it all in one go. I'm just going to pace myself with that one. I'm happy that I've got the Let Me Boy to Sleep and the Deep Sleep Whisper one up and running again. So, yeah. And also, what? oh, by the way, I should just say, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes because um, do I need to give a because? I suppose it's just just for your for your safety. It's as simple as that. It's I'll give you an example. So if you listen to me like on a regular basis to go to sleep. And then one day you're driving in your car and you're thinking, oh, I'll listen to Jason. Perhaps you better not when you're driving if you associate me with sleeping. So I would say never listen to me, any of my recordings, unless you can safely close your eyes. So I try and say that on every recording. So there. Um, Because... Although I try and pretend I don't care about anyone, I do actually a little bit care. Because I, I, want, I want people to be safe. And I'm on here doing these recordings. I'm not, a, well, I am a counsellor. I was trained as a counsellor, but I'm not, I'm not in the role of counsellor. I'm not really in the role of a therapist. I'm not. I kind of mingle and intertwingle, intertwingle, intertwine, entwine, 
inter intertwine. I don't know. Intertwingle. Um, my knowledge, my experience with things I've read about, things I've seen, with ideas and thoughts and with creativity, you know, kind of just mixing it all together and hoping that the cake won't taste too bad. It's kind of, in some ways, everything I do is an experiment, but based upon some concrete elements. So I kind of think... Yeah, I always know where the where the door is. You know, I always make sure. So if I go into a maze, a maze would be no good for me because I'd always know the way out. Because I wouldn't be able to enter the maze unless I knew a way out, even if it involved uh, renting a helicopter to come and pick me up, or going in the maze with. A backpack and inside the backpack I had a chainsaw or a hedge trimmer and I just trimmed my way out which would probably annoy the uh, owners of the of the maze yeah mind you it could be kind of a new a new maze Reminds me of that film. Is it The Maze? That was a strange film. See, so, yeah, um, I was going to say something just before I did the only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I was about to say something really amazing, but I forgot. Maybe it wasn't quite as amazing as I thought it was. So I changed my mind again, and I've, as I said, I've just rebuilt the sites, and I spent two days doing it. And last night, yeah, I was up to quite late. Although I was watching the boxing. There was a live big fight on. Lemachenko was fighting Corolla on Sky Sports at three o'clock in the morning till about six or maybe half five, six, something like that. So I was watching that, but I was also building the websites at the same time. So I'm thinking about having some pods and websites where maybe for the stop smoking, maybe websites for the um, chronic pain, sleep stuff, maybe some of the other courses, the sleep, what are they called, the sleep weekly? weekly sleep ones which is really popular as well so but what I did and I just I need to just I decided I'm gonna step back not now because I'm in a chair and I'm against the wall I'm not against the wall I'm in a chair that is kind of against the wall You know, I I know this is a little bit childish. And those of you that listen regularly will be really surprised that I do anything childish. Because I'm such a mature adult. And so sensible most of the time. But for years and years and years, including childhood, but even as an adult, I've been visiting my dad and he'll kind of at one point guaranteed if I'm there for at least a couple of days 
oh, can you pull the chair away from the wall because it leaves a mark? Um, if I'm just there for lunch, June, I don't normally hear it, but if I stay over, I'll be sitting in a chair and it will lean against the wall. It's like, can you move away from the wall because it leaves a mark on the wall? So when I finally got my own place four years ago, literally four years ago um, now, like within the last week or so, I purposely rub the furniture against the wall to leave marks. And it does leave marks. I need to paint the wall now. It's a bit annoying. But what is strange is what's left the biggest mark is my arm. And it might sound weird, but my arm resting because my the the chair is aiming towards the television. And the right hand of the chair is pressed against the wall. It's not like tightly pressed. Um, you couldn't put a pencil in between it. It wouldn't hold the pencil up. You know, it's not that tight. Not that I've, that I even own a pencil. Does anyone own pencils anymore? Do they still exist? I don't know. But it's. So I'm facing the TV and my arm, because it's a big black squeaky chair, you hear it every time I talk, every, you know, it squeaks, you can hear that. I try and keep still as much as possible, but it still squeaks. And my right arm is rested on the the armrest, I suppose that's what it's, yeah, that's what it's called, an armrest. I never thought about that. And it's weird because it's as if it looks right, as if my arm has basically been there and the sun's been shining against the wall for four years and there's a shadow now like a permanent shadow on the wall. But it's probably just my hand, my arm. But it's actually higher than my arm, which is weird. Anyway, I don't know, can shadows stay on a wall? I suppose in movies they can. Did you ever watch the the Saint? It was a TV show with uh, Ian Ogilvy in the early eighties, I think. And he used to have this little halo used to come above his head. It didn't come I mean, by come above his head. I mean, it, it appeared above his head, but it wasn't really there, and it wasn't really there during the show. It was just kind of uh, I suppose the saint bit I'm making out that he was like, really nice and Roger Moore was the original saint I think back in the 60s well anyway Ian Ogilvy became the saint he took over from that, that job and I remember seeing a preview of it and there'd be the halo above his head and I was, I thought that he was going to become invisible. But he never did. I thought he had like superpowers, but he didn't. I've seen a saint from the 60s as well. And it's quite funny really because Roger Moore, he pretty much just 
the saint and James Bond are very similar. He played the character in a very similar way. Very similar. I liked him in that other show. What was it? The one with Tony Curtis. The... What was it called? That was also in the 60s. The... I forget what it was called, but I used to love watching it in the 90s. I used to watch that. Because it was just really good, and it was... And Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers was good. I used to watch that in the 90s as well. As well as the 80s when it first came out. Was it Gerard? Something Gerard, wasn't it? Thing is, Buck, this, this, my memories of Buck Rogers is a bit tainted. Okay? Because I actually drew, what did I spend? Put about two or three hours drawing Buck Rogers out of the looking comic and I drew it with a pen I had a pencils then they did exist back then and paper and and I drew didn't trace I drew I might have traced no I couldn't really get the hang of tracing But it depends on how thick the paper was because it works really thin paper because you could see the tracing underneath and you could draw around it. But if it's thick paper, sometimes what I do is I put the tracing at the bottom of the pad and like, why can't I see it? Why can't it? It's like, because it's at the bottom of the pad. So I'm like, right, okay. I've got to keep going on about it. It's at the bottom of the pad. Right, I get it. So why can't I see it then? Because it's at the bottom. I know you said that, but why can't I see it? Those conversations used to last for ages. So I did this picture, and I think it was when I had the chicken pox. And it was snowing outside. And there, it was beautiful out there. Because I don't know about you. I, mean, I imagine it's different if you live somewhere where there's snow all the time. It's probably just like very samey you know it's kind of like if you if you work in a Jaffa Cake factory Jaffa Cakes probably don't hold the same excitement as they do to me I love a Jaffa Cake but I think if I was around them all the time I might not get quite as aroused That reminds me, years ago, I I worked in this, I had this job, and uh, it was basically this big freezer place, and they had a, a, like a new job on, and they asked me to help, well, they just told me to go and do it really, they didn't ask me, but it was Cadbury's cream eggs, putting them into boxes, like big boxes so putting the little boxes into the big boxes and because uh, they were all frozen and then I think checking them and you know just general stuff like that now at the end of the job after a few weeks of doing that I couldn't face another Cadbury's cream egg I just you know I could never eat another one after that you know for for at least a year because I just consumed so many as did I'm surprised that the company didn't shut down of course none of that's true because I do lie a lot so yeah none of that really happened but can't eat too many of them. So, uh, 
didn't do much confectionery. Why do people in America call it candy? We call it sweets in England. Candy. Candy. So you've got candy floss. And that's not chocolate. But then candy isn't necessarily chocolate, is it? It can be just sweet, isn't it? So why call it candy in America and we call it sweets here? Which was first? It's things like that that I really don't think about very often. I think I shall have a drink. I woke up this morning with a hangover. I felt like I had a hangover. I say this morning it was 7.30 this evening but or yesterday evening but I don't drink alcohol so I don't know what on earth it was I thought maybe I'd just been asleep too long and dehydrated a bit but I didn't have the heating on I don't think because that can sometimes be you know if Sometimes when it's cold, you know, like in the winter and stuff. And other times when it's cold. I I might wake up, go and do a wee wee, and then I might turn the heating on. You know, if it's, if it's like six o'clock or seven o'clock, I might think, ah, I know what I'll do. I think I'll turn the heating on. Now that's how I word it now. But at the time it was probably more a case of heating on. Back to bed. That's kind of it. Wouldn't it be lovely if you know at a moment you know when you get up out of bed you go to the toilet and you get back into bed and you just go back to sleep instantly like absolutely instantly that would be a good position to be in when you first go to bed just have that same feeling of just laying down and bang gone and you wake up in the morning or whatever time because you know a lot of, there are a lot of people who do night shifts not everybody sleeps during the night some people sleep during the day so I think it's uh, I have to remember that it's not everybody I mean technically people in Australia sleep during the day because Australia's day is my night so probably well, I reckon 90% of Australians sleep during the day. Because that's my night. No. Yeah. So when I'm asleep, although I sleep, I'm asleep during the day as well, which is their night. But technically, I'm probably asleep at the same time. This all made sense to me before I started talking. Now I'm not so sure. Now, I'm not so sure. Oh, it's been a, it's been a weird week. Really, really strange week. I put so much work into building websites and then just deleting them. And then to go and build them again, so... I am determined that I'm not going to go anywhere near the websites that I've built. You know, in the sense of deleting them or anything. I'm just going to keep them. Oh, another thing that I did. 
Oh dear, because I did my, oh yeah, during the week I did that premium website for the Let Me Boy You to Sleep. Premium. So it was the plan and I paid for it and, you know, got it all up and running and uploaded all the stuff. It took ages to do. And the plan was to, the current month is free to listen to anything that I reproduce during the current month but then any back catalogue is uh, a subscription service 9 99 a month or something like that and it was going so well and and then it didn't work it just didn't work it worked on laptop worked on the tablet did not work on the phone which would have been fine 10 years ago because you know most people were using laptops 10 years ago but now the majority of people are using phones to you know especially with podcasts and stuff like that so I just got rid of it But before I'd got rid of it, I had deleted all of the old catalog, all of the, the back um, sessions of the Let Me Boy to Sleep from the original podcast. So it was a case of re uploading everything. And what that did is it messed with some of the podcasts because then they didn't have anything to play until I'd uploaded them all and uh, most of the podcasts they kind of check the RSS feed every day or something like that so it should all be up to date however there's loads of links that are now not working the links to the different podcasts are now gone because new links have been made so it's that's another reason why I need to just stop what is weird though and I don't quite understand since I re-uploaded all the sessions I suddenly got loads and loads of downloads like a lot of downloads so yesterday I had nearly 6,000 downloads the day before I had about 7,000 downloads and I know that maybe a couple of places might download it as far you know but that that maybe would ex explain a couple of hundred downloads but not not that many thousands to have 13,000 in two days it just seems I don't quite understand what's happened there and never mind I'll probably get like 73 downloads today. <laughs> that would be funny. Well, it wouldn't be funny. I've also put the adverts back on. But they're only available. They're only, they're only on at the very beginning. And I've just got on there to try and cover the costs. To, you know, a little bit to cover the costs of running this free service so that's it I don't think the adverts are too bad I don't know any other free service has adverts doesn't it so I'm okay with that I think I've uh, should get about $20 this month <laughs> any little bit of help doesn't it I suppose 
every little bit. I think the only thing with the adverts is at a different l level of volume to me. I think because I'm quiet, even when I do these, even though they're not whispers, I'm still I just naturally talk quietly. So it's kind of you know what I mean it's but I don't have the adverts in mid midway can you imagine me talking like this and suddenly you know 30 minutes in a big loud advert telling you about something you've got no interest in I don't have them at the end either so I've only got them I'm only getting a third of the amount that I could be getting from the adverts. I could have the free adverts per session, but you know, as I said, I don't because I don't I don't want to jar people out at the end if they've relaxed and tired and stuff. And maybe I'll make some more practical stuff pain relief or you know maybe I can have adverts at the end of those perhaps I also I deleted all the stuff all of the old episodes of Let Me Boy You To Sleep from my SoundCloud podcast so I've uh, re-uploaded those yesterday or the other last night or the night before I don't know what to do about that SoundCloud podcast. It just really fluctuates from being, you know, some days I get like a few hundred that plays. Sometimes I get maybe a hundred plays. Some days I'll get 60 plays. Sometimes I'll get a thousand plays. It's just like, that's the SoundCloud, but it's, very small compared to the other podcasts that I've got like on Spreaker but I don't know I've got a little thing about SoundCloud I quite because I've had those podcasts with SoundCloud for years many years I've been with SoundCloud on and off and I don't know, I kind of, I'd like to see it here reach a million, but I'm quite a long way off that at the moment, I think on about 60, 67,000 or something, but I did have over 200,000 on my last podcast with SoundCloud, I'd like to have a million. With the Spreaker one since November, I've got 119,000 downloads and probably over with about 12, 13,000 plays. So we look forward to that being a million as well. I just want, just the word million sounds quite nice to have in a sentence connected to me. You know, I definitely would celebrate that. To have a million downloads of a podcast or of even collectively of all the podcasts, I'd be happy. That'd be brilliant. I'd just be really pleased. Ah, I'm just having a drink. Yeah, it's Easter this week. I don't know if you have Easter in other countries, I suppose you do. Some countries. Uh, in America, do you have Easter? We have Easter eggs, where it's basically chocolate eggs. 
with kind of a gift inside and what kind of gifts when I was younger when I was a kid I'm pretty sure the Easter eggs used to have gifts like toys and stuff and maybe I'm wrong but the easter eggs now generally so if it's a, a crunchy easter egg or a Mars bar easter egg it'll have little Mars bars inside or a Skittles easter egg or well, you could just go for all the different sweets or candies that you have so I'm, I'm guessing you have different ones in America, probably different ones in Canada, different ones in Australia, different ones in New Zealand, different you know eggs and candy and sweets in South Africa, um, different ones in Germany, different ones in France. Is Easter called Le Easter in France? Or Un Easter? In Italy, is it Easter? 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 No. I think, yeah, I remember when I was a kid, we used to go, me and my brothers, well, I, me anyway, I don't know about them, and we used to go to Sunday school on Easter. But it was the only time we ever went. The Sunday school would be kind of a church thing it's as if they wanted us out of the house yeah, I wonder what that was about what I liked about easter eggs apart from eating them is um when you give them to people you don't have to wrap them up because if you did what well, they're going to wrap us up well I wonder what's in there on this Easter day where everyone just gives Easter eggs that's where you're wrong it's a giant frog it wouldn't be a giant frog I suppose you can buy frogs big frogs but you'd need a lot of space wouldn't you it wouldn't be fair to put a frog in like a a fish tank because frogs they want to bounce and hop and be free it's like a kangaroo you wouldn't keep a kangaroo in the airing cupboard needs to hop and be free there was a film I saw about a kangaroo it's really funny and this is like a really mischievous kangaroo and they're chasing it these people are chasing it and it's just it's really funny really yeah I did laugh I like to laugh about things sometimes. I like watching things that make me laugh. Don't worry, I'm not writing or rehearsing my dating profile. I like to laugh. I tell you, when I was a kid, I used to love watching films and 
been an author in my childhood, really, from the age of probably the age of nine or ten. We had a DVD, not DVD, a, um, a video recorder. And then it was, we first had a, what was it, a 2000 system. I forget who made it, but it was like really good quality. You could record both sides of the tape, all that stuff, and and I think that the tape would hold hours and hours, like six hours worth of worth of uh, video on each side, something like that. Well, anyway, Betamax came in. They kind of, they were cheaper and they kind of took over and they became the big, the big cheese. And, you know, pretty much everybody had a Betamax video recorder and the tapes, the video tapes, were, yeah, it was fairly good, it was okay. And I used to record stuff off the telly. I remember You hear that? It's Andre. Andre, you okay, mate? Hey. He's asleep. He's dreaming. Sorry if I hope I didn't make anyone jump with my chair. If anyone wants to buy me a new chair <laughs> feel free this one's just falling apart now I think it's just it's got all worn out the cover's even starting to peel off God. plus it's noise oh, just the noise of it it's a little bit so I'm used to it. it doesn't bother me really that much to be fair but I do wonder if it's uh, disturbs the neighbour when I sit on it so we had the BMX video recorder but you could only play one side And everything was cheaper, a lot cheaper than the 2000 systems. I'm trying to think who made the 2000 systems. Might like Hitachi or something like that. So we had the Betamax recorder, and then. You used to be able to buy the video tapes in like packs of five or something, or even packs of ten, and they'd be like one pound each or something like that. And sometimes in special offers, you get two for the price of one. I had a friend when I was pretty. How old was I? 18 yeah 18 and yeah yeah it was 18 and he he lived in this uh, like a studio flat 
and it was with a council and he was on the waiting list to get a bigger flat but he had this like a bit what well, it was it was nice you know going there it was on the ground floor you'd walk in if I remember correctly I think the kitchen was on the left hand side as you went in and then there was a bathroom maybe on the right hand side and then you went in and it, I'm not quite sure but you had two beds with a, like a distance between them they weren't put together two beds and I used to stay there a couple of times like overnight and um, on his wall he had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videotapes I'm talking wall to wall shelves with videotapes on and they were probably VHS actually not BMX they might, yeah because BMX well they might who knows who knows I don't know it was long before DVDs anyway and he had I don't know how many he had but he had a lot and they were all like films that's pretty much what you can get on on videotapes isn't it it's going to be films I suppose I suppose it could have been football matches or um, news I suppose I suppose. but it was uh, I'm not going to say pirate films because uh, it wasn't just into pirates but you know what I mean it was he had kind of everything I think it looked like he had every film that was ever produced since 1924 January you know there's loads and loads of films never seen that many well I have I've been in a video shop they probably had more there but but he didn't have to be fair he probably had Yeah, because in the video shops, quite often they have them facing out so you can see the cover. I mean, they, we don't have video shops anymore, do we? But um, they used to be. We used to have video shops here. I mean, I remember the first one I ever went to. It was down the seafront. And it was... I think I've only known... He only used three video shops before I moved to London. There's one down the seafront. I'm not sure if they moved or it was just another one, but one opened up around the corner from where I lived. So I'm not going to walk down to the seafront if there's one around the corner. No matter how much I like the people that ran it, but I didn't know him. But, you know, I kind of liked them because they'd let me take anything out without worrying about my age. You know, I was taking 18s out and I didn't look 18 when I was 25. You know, I was, I've always, always looked, well, not always now maybe, but I did look young. I didn't look 18 when I was 18, so I definitely didn't look 18 when I was 13. But they just uh, let me take whatever out I wanted. And I wasn't really into horror. I, I used to watch horror films with the family. So if I was choosing films to watch with the family, I'd, we used to watch quite a few horror films. I don't know why, actually. Stuff that I wasn't supposed to watch. But when I was in the shop myself, once I got my own card for me 
especially with the one around the corner, I wasn't interested in horror films. What I wanted was comedy and martial arts. So I watched every single martial arts film pretty much that's ever been available on video. I mean, I watched all of them, every single one that they had, and they had a huge collection, and especially once I was renting them, they were just getting more and more. In fact, I think they used to just, like, do a cycle, so I think they'd, they had other shops, and they'd kind of take some out of one shop and put them into another shop, and so they kind of made the the selection a bit more fresher a bit like I suppose a little bit like a a fish tank with a like some running water you know because it keeps the airs keeps it fresh the water oxygenated so it kept the video shops oxygenated like that I used to go in there and I f- think the one around the corner I think it had a downstairs as well and when there was no one looking I used to look at all the adult films as well didn't take them out but I used to look at the covers and try and memorise the pictures for when I got home but I'd, I used to so I got all the martial arts films out but I love the comedies. I know. I know. I kind of mock the whole. I like to laugh, because um, we all like to laugh, don't we? But I've pretty much always loved comedy, like comedy films, you know, whatever, stand-up comedy. Just yeah, just. I think we all need some light relief in life. I genuinely do. And I also discovered that there's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of funny stuff that we, you have to look for. There's this little bit of gold nuggets out there in the film world. And one such thing I shall tell you about it might not be a surprise because you may have seen it. Right, here we go. Oh, I discovered... I didn't discover him because he was famous. I'm not a... I don't know. I'm not a, a management of entertainers or anything. I discovered Steve Martin before he became famous in England. And you may think if you're in other countries saying, well, how do you mean you discovered him before he was famous in England? He was famous in America in the 70s. Ah, but he wasn't famous in England. He didn't become really well known until he did the film Roxanne that was the film that you know made him really well known here and then pretty much everything he did from then on I'm trying to think what other films did he do after that um, I can't remember but loads he did the film with Michael Caine didn't he he did but in America he was already famous not just because he was one of the most popular stand up comedians that America's ever had he was filling stadiums in America when he was doing his uh, stand-up act. You know, he was up there with Bill Cosby as far as 
I think that's where the comparison probably ends but hopefully but he was you know, if Bill Cosby was filling stadiums that's Richard Pryor as well but not all comedians did and Steve Martin was one of the ones that did but he wasn't known here because we didn't have Saturday Night Live here apart from those that had satellites and you know we, you know it wasn't on normal terrestrial television but Roxanne was such a huge hit I think worldwide but it was massive here and that kind of suddenly everyone knew who he was but before that in the early 80s I was watching his films the and obviously there's The Jerk and that's a famous one of his most famous films in America but the All of Me was it The Man With Two Brains uh, I forget I, I watched every single one of Steve Martin's films long before he did the um, Roxanne and those early films were the funniest thing for me they were the funniest films that he ever made um, more so than The Jerk I think the the other ones the ones that weren't as famous so funny uh, I can't even I remember bits but it was just I need to rewatch them actually because I haven't seen them for like 30 years but very very funny and then quite a few of the martial art films were funny as well like Jackie Chan again before he became famous in the west and I'm trying to think of a film that he got famous for I can't remember but I watched all of his films like Drunken Master um, and they were all dubbed dubbed into English but they were really good films and they were really funny you know he you know for one scene he'd walk in he'd go into a restaurant and he was he didn't have any money and he ordered some rice and some noodles and whatever and he's, and he's basically eating it he said some more I have some more and he's stuffing his face and he keeps eating and eventually the manager comes over and says you need to pay and he says I haven't finished because he's still eating a bowl of noodles he said oh, I haven't finished he said you need to pay now I said oh I haven't got any money like you know and then a big fight ensues and all these people are trying to get to him and he's he's jumping over tables and chucking chairs and doing all his acrobatic stuff but at the same time eating the noodles it's very funny very funny but the thing that I there was a, there was a uh, I kind of it was a collection of films called I think called the Trinity films and they were from I suppose the 70s maybe but they were kind of in the spaghetti western style but I'd never heard of them before and both the actors were famous actors I think is it Jackie Gleason maybe I don't know and but these films as I said I'd, I'm not an expert on films I'm not a film buff but I 
I've spent enough time in video shops to kind of see every single film that was available, you know, and I'm quite aware of what films are what and stuff. And I watched a lot of films, you know, thousands, thousands and thousands of films. And I don't recall ever seeing the Trinity films on television or even spoken about. Yet they were they were really funny. I think it's one of them because my name is Trinity or the man named Trinity or a town named Trim- Trinity, something like that. And it's very funny. It's really... and But they didn't just do the cowboy films. They did other films as well. Together. They did loads. I don't know how many films they did together. But they were a really good mix. Like, as a double act on, on camera. Very funny. And, um, yeah, absolutely loved. So I watched all of those films that I could get hold of. And then another video shop opened in the town. So I used to go there. And the bloke there had long blonde hair and his girlfriend or his wife sort of worked in there as well sometimes. And she's just like, wow, she was yeah, I quite I preferred it when she was in there because I just I'd sort of say hello and she'd ignore me. But you know, sometimes I is when I was about fourteen, fifteen, I'd rather be ignored by someone beautiful than. Well, actually, that doesn't make sense, does it? At least I was in the same room, I suppose. But I. Used to, again, I rented all the films out that I could. I, you know, any comedy, even if it was from the fifties or sixties or seventies, or if it had unknown actors, I didn't bother about famous actors. I just, you know, I'd rent it. If it was a comedy, I'd rent it and I'd watch it. And quite often, you know, you get those moments that are just brilliant. I think I saw every Gene Wilder film and some of the films not every film he's in was great but sometimes there's that little bit of genius because he was one of the best comedy actors I think and there's one scene I don't even know what film it was in but a woman kisses him on the lips and he stands back looks horrified rubs his lips and like a little kid would do yells and runs away screaming (laughs) and it's one of those moments where I had I had to I was laughing so hard I had to pause it rewind it and listen and watch it again and still couldn't stop laughing and those I like those moments there's another one with I think it's called What About Bob with uh, Bill what's his name from Groundhog Day Bill something you know his name you know the bloke and so Bob that's Bill he's asleep on the couch and Richard Dreyfus is his psychologist psychiatrist He's trying to wake him up. And he's been asleep all night and he's sleeping in his house. He's trying to wake him up. So he's um, it's like, Bob, Bob, nothing. Shakes him, nothing. And he's basically going through everything. Like he ends up playing a trumpet in his ear, uh, shouting, screaming, playing cymbals and all stuff like that. Really anything to get him up. Nothing. And then Bob's little alarm clock goes off. <laughs> and it wakes him up. <laughs> that's what makes it so funny. It's like the whole trumpet and everything. Like, that's funny. 
but then him to wake up to this little alarm clock like going dee 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 it's like oh he yours <laughs> for me those moments they're the moments that I love in life those moments that I laugh and it's just pure joy see I do like to laugh but I wouldn't put it on a dating app you know I wouldn't sort of I like to eat me I love eating I love to poo I like to you know we all it's just things you need to do and I think we need to laugh it's not a case of I like to laugh we need to laugh it's it's important I think it's it's probably more important than we'll ever know and also we need to sleep which is why I do these and hopefully we'll continue my aim is to continue to do this now for the rest of my life and I hope that I get to the point where I can do one a day for the next 50 odd years we can all grow old together yeah 50 years I'll be I'll be 98 can you imagine me now welcome to let me put you to sleep dot com wow 50 years time will we even have the internet you know, who knows what will happen then. Wow, 50 years time, I might have... I might have 2,000 downloads a day instead of a 1,000. Wow. I might be famous. Ooh. Anyway, the 60-minute mark's gone. 67 minutes... So I'm going to go, I just want to say a quick, <sighs> a quick goodbye and I hope that you all have a good sleep and keep safe. And just remember that you deserve to be happy. And you deserve to have a good laugh. And to enjoy yourself. Keep safe.